Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining this quick take. My name is Alba Rivas, I am a developer advocate at Salesforce and here you have my contact details in case that you want to ask me questions later. In this quick take, I'm going to talk about how to debug your Lightning Web Components test using the Chrome Developer Tools. So this is the second quick take of a series. In the series, I explain the three different approaches in which you can debug Lightning Web Components in Visual Studio Code so that you pick the approach that you like the most. So first, I want to uh, give you a quick reminder of the different tasks that are involved in a debugging process, right? Because first of all, we are going to need to launch our application in debug mode, in our case, our yes test execution. And second, we are going to need to attach an inspector. And this is important because in this quick take, I'm going to show you how to do those two things separately and uh, to use the Chrome developer tools as the inspector. So let me go to the uh, demo in VS Code. Here we are in VS Code. Today we are going to use exactly the same example that we used in the first quick take Thus, I'm not going to go into the details of the implementation of the component or the test, and I'm going to focus more on explaining the different steps that you need to follow to debug uh, successfully your test execution with Chrome Developer Tools. So let's say that we want to do that. The first thing that we need to do obviously, is to launch our application in debug mode. And for that, we can take a look at package.json. This is the package.json file that it's generated when you use the regular SFDX force uh, project create command. And by default, it's going to contain these scripts here. If you take a closer look, you can see here that there is a test unit debug command. This command is going to launch your application in debug mode. And this is something that we can execute with npm or yarn, but for convenience, we are going to use npm. By the way, you can change the name of these scripts if needed. So for that, I'm going to open a terminal. In the terminal, we are going to execute the command, which is this one here. And here we observe several things. First of all, our application is running in debug mode. Perfect, this is what we wanted. And second, the application is running behind the scenes, this command. It is exactly the same command that we run when using the Salesforce extensions. One thing to note here is that if you execute the command as it is, it's going to execute all the tests from your project. But you can pass extra parameters to the command using dash dash. What's going to happen is that the attributes or parameters that you pass in here are going to be appended to the uh, node just execution. So for instance, here, I'm going, I want to execute only the test from hello conditional rendering class. And that means that my test command, my test execution command is going to append the name of the class at the end of the, of the command, right? Great. So one difference with the Salesforce extensions is that in Salesforce extensions, both launching the um, application in debug mode and attaching the inspector are things that are going to happen and handled by the Salesforce extensions. But by using this method, here we are only launching the application and we need to attach a debugger. So to attach a debugger, what we can do is to go to Google Chrome and right here, Chrome Inspect. That way, a menu of the developer tools is going to open and in the menu, we're going to see uh, the different node processes that are running in our system in debug mode. 
In our case, this is the uh, jest process that we are running here. And this is the one that we want to inspect. So let's click on inspect. When you click on inspect, the developer tools that you are familiar with are going to open and then we can start debugging the applications. You may think that by resuming the script execution here, the breakpoints that we created in VS Code are going to be read, but that's not true for Chrome developer tools. Those breakpoints are not understandable by uh, the Chrome inspector. What we need to do instead is to add a debugger statement. By adding this debugger statement and then resuming the application, the Chrome inspector is going to um, ins run and inspect our code that was running in debug mode and is going to stop at the debugger statement that we wrote. From now on, if we want to add breakpoints in Chrome Developer Tools, that's perfectly fine. And even if we want to add breakpoints in our production code, we can open the file with command P and then write in the name of the file, right? In our case, it was hello conditional rendering.js. And this is the compiled code for our file. You are going to find some more information, but this is uh, the um, the sentences, sorry, the statements that the Lightning Web Components compiler adds. But here, in the code of the component that is uh, identify, identifiable here, you can also add breakpoints as we did in the uh, VS Code execution. Remember this breakpoint here. So now I can resume the execution and I can use the Chrome developer tools that I'm familiar with. That may be a good option for you if you are uh, very used to use these tools. Great, so let me go back to the presentation and share with you some resources. The first resource is a trailhead module that teaches how to write Lightning Web Components tests with Jest. The second one is the documentation for the Salesforce extensions. It's more related to the first quick take, but I wanted to add it here because it's interesting anyway. And the third one is the documentation and the GitHub repo for the SFDX LWC Jest library, which is the one that we use for testing Lightning Web Components with Jest. Finally, I want to uh, give you a quick reminder of the different means in which you can connect with us, uh, all our social channels, the developer site, and so on. And I wanted to tell you, if you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell to receive notifications. And I want to ask you in this quick take something else, which is, if you have watched the different videos of the series, please add a comment and tell me which debugging technique do you prefer, why, because you think that Salesforce extensions are much more user-friendly, or maybe you prefer to use a great feature of Chrome developer tools that you want to tell me about, or if you have any problems, you can write comments as well, because I will be monitoring them. With that, we have arrived to the end of the quick take. Thank you so much and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.